And now, now if I can use your telephone, I'd like to see if my mother is listening. Hello, operator. Get me Imglick, 8654, please. Hello, Mrs. Flynn? It's Georgie Jessel. How are you? How are you, Mrs. Flynn? You fell down and strained both ankles. My, my. I'm sorry to hear it. Would you mind running upstairs and getting my mother to your phone? Oh, she's there. Well, that's quite a coincidence. I say, uh, uh, it's good. Put her on, will you? Thank you. Hello, Mom. Well, I called you to tell you that I'm broadcasting by shortwave to the boys in the Philippines, Australia, Iceland, and Ireland. Yeah, I guess he's listening, too. Well, I hope he is. Yeah. I told you a thousand times, it is not Max Arthur. MacArthur. MacArthur. <laughs> Can't make everybody max. Yes. He's a wonderful man. He fought the threshing, too. What do you mean, what about? He fought. He's, he's in Australia. Yes, he made most of the trip by mosquito boat. It's wonderful how they can train such a little bug. Don't ask me such a little bug. Now, listen, I wish you'd listen to this broadcast. You don't listen to shortwave anymore? Why? You caught cold this winter listening to the Russian broadcast. Well, all right. What are you doing at Mrs. Flynn's? You're having a meeting with Mrs. Schultz and Mrs. Desmoni and all the neighbors. You're all chipping in for a sinking fund for the Japs. That's a good idea. <laughs> How's the family? Anna's fellow. What is he doing? He's in the Navy? When did he join the Navy? He didn't exactly join. He was walking down Broadway past the place where the fellow in uniform was yelling, Come inside and see the world. He thought it was a free newsreel. He's in the Navy. All right. <laughs> what boat is he on? Not on it. I should help him get on to South Dakota. Why particularly to South Dakota? He's got a friend on the North Dakota. All right. <laughs> you don't feel good, huh? Well, the trouble is with you, Mama, you don't chew your food enough. You must realize that's why nature gave you your teeth. You didn't give them to you. You bought them. Well, all right. <laughs> How's Willie? You got trouble with him? What's the matter? He's going to a party and he won't take a bath. Why not? Says the party's informal. Well, look, Ma. <laughs> what did you do over the weekend? You went down to Virginia to Cousin Milford's camp. Well, I'm glad. How is Cousin Milford getting along? What the sergeant said made you feel very proud. What did he say? He said the way Milford is going, it wouldn't be long before he's up for a court-martial. That's very good. <laughs> Tell me, while you're in Virginia, did you, did you see the spot where General Cornwallis fell? You did. They should fix it. You tripped there, too. <laughs> I'll tell the boys you send your love. Good night, Mother. Thank you. Now, here's a note that's worked its way up from somewhere in the Caribbean area, from a dozen fighting Marines to Command Performance USA. It says we've got a piano down here and a top kick who thinks he can play Rhapsody in Blue. And we swear that he's playing it backwards. He's got the music, but he's all thumbs, all right? Let's set the sergeant right by letting him hear Rhapsody in Blue the way it was written. Well, a certain Marine sergeant is going to take a little ribbing via shortwave. But here's your number, boys, with Mark Warno conducting and America's favorite pianist to play it, Oscar Levant. George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. 